What's up, everybody? We are back. John De La Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. We got Avengers JLA crossover. This is a crossover from 2003, which got in this collector edition set of two volumes. Uh, and the first volume is the story, and the second volume is uh, this compendium, which I thought was kind of unnecessary. I was looking for the paperback for a while because I'm like, I don't want to pay the prices for this. This is so absurdly out of print. And good luck if you can find this under $200. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to find this uh, for less. And I want to thank Salvatore of uh, the Omnibuds group on Facebook for hooking me up with this. And I uh, really appreciate that because I've been looking for this for a long time. But it is extremely hard to find. Um, and so you get this slipcase with all the Avengers. This is George Perez's art. Um, and he's, you know, just like Crisis of Infinite Earths, he draws all the Avengers and all the JLA and all their tertiary characters into here. And there's actually a map in the back of the book that, like, goes into each character and which one they are and actually has little, uh, you know, one, two, three. So you can actually hunt down every single character if you are that autistic. <laughs> and uh, here's the size difference between it and a regular volume just for comparison i'll lift this up a little bit so it's a lot bigger and wider and this is like that it's, it's the same size as the dc absolute editions so bigger than omnibuses and uh it's just really nice to look at george perez art in this i'm going to talk about the compendium second because here it is each book uh actually has its own dust jacket also um and on the inside of the dust jacket you've got this like really classy uh you know sort of faux leather look with an embossed JLA Avengers Collector's Edition. You get your uh, little card in here saying it's the Collector's Edition, what it is, and we get into this. So there's some introductions. Stan Lee, Julia Schwartz, and we talk about the characters, the main characters here, so who's who. Here's a little overview in case you're not super familiar with the characters. I assume everybody here is, so I'm not going to bother with that. And we get into this storyline where there are, uh, there's this, the... Um, what is it? The World of Polemicus, I think you call it. There you go. And there's this weird universe-shattering stuff going on, and it opens with the universe, or eternity, rather. And once upon a time, there was a universe. Very cool. And all the titles are really neat, too. A Journey into Mystery, so it's just references to past Marvel and DC stuff in here. Kirk Busiek is a, as a writer, really knows his history and really uh, understands the events. I mean, there's a whole reference back here where like all the characters uh, or is that in the compendium i guess it's in the compendium i'll show that later but there's a whole reference chart about every you know every panel like has meaning in this and that's that's a de that shows george perez's and kurt Busey care for this stuff um so it, it starts out with um with superman and the jla fighting terminus which is odd because that's a, a marvel villain and then Odd stuff's going on. Spectre shows up, and then um, the Avengers are fighting these the Starro uh, mind control things, which is odd because it's a um, <laughs> a JLA sort of situation. Um, and so this look at this perspective shot. I mean, you are below the characters, looking up into the city. Very cool. Very very neat. And George Perez slams so many characters into every panel. There's really a lot to look for as you're reading this, and having it in oversized art is just awesome. So I'm stoked to have that. This is the best comic art probably I've ever seen. Um, and yeah, they, they fight that. They realize there's something amiss here. And what happens is uh, we find out the, um, uh, the collector, not the collector, the game master, I think is his name, uh, you know, one of those old cosmic beings from Marvel goes to the JLA and says, you guys need to assemble these objects of which uh, half of them are theirs and half of them are from the Marvel world, like the Cosmic Cube or the Green Lantern charging device thingy. And then this other character uh, shows up to the Marvel folk and says, hey, you need to collect these items. And they start going on these quests to collect these items. And it's really this Game Master guy it's a i'm sorry metron he's a evil uh dc villain and they're trying to score points by uh by collecting these items as it goes and they finally meet uh, in a beautiful two-page spread also lots of beautiful spreads by uh george perez here look at this look at this oh my gosh thor just crushing superman right there it's awesome and it turns out it's just a, a game 
and the Avengers and JLA are fighting over this game. And uh, we get into the second issue. These are like 60 page issues too. And we see this like uh, female counterpart to Eternity. I referenced Contest of Champions, which is the original sort of Marvel crossover, which got everybody together. And we get lots of fighting of the JLA in, <laughs> in this one. And they score their points, and it you know, and, and it goes through. It's like two to one, three to one, as they get the Cosmic Cube, and they get the Lantern, and they get the Mask. And uh, lots of lots of fighting between all the characters you would want to fight. Vision versus Red Tornado, you know, uh, um, Quicksilver versus Flash. Captain America and Batman, of course, who both are, you know, as the leaders and smarter, they kind of take off to the side and go and kind of try to investigate what's going on instead of actually fighting is the twist with them. And there's lots of twists in here, which are which are really nice. Uh, Dark Seed actually gets the Infinity Gauntlet uh, as a nice reference there, and it doesn't even work in the DC Universe. So, <laughs> womp womp. Sorry, Dark Seed. But you get lots of reverse perspective shots. Um, but, I mean, the layouts of this are absolutely cool. You get lots of Avengers reacting in the same way and JLA reacting in the same way. And again, more of the same uh, deal as they fight through this. And it looks like they, they kind of solve things at this, and the game ends, they tie... And the Avengers are like, well, you know what? We're going to use these objects actually to take you guys down. And then uh, things get messed up because the Grandmaster messes with things here. Uh, and uh, this guy from the DC Universe, whose name I forget. Gosh, what what is his name? Oh, well. Um, he wants the secrets of the universe, and he's going to fight anyway. And everything winks out. Oh, no. So... This is very much in the style of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and I think Kurt Busiek really used that as a template, because Perez was known for his work on that. Look at, look at all the heroes again. Um, and that had a flow to it, where there was somebody trying to screw up time, and the heroes thought they finished it and thought they won, and then it turned out they really didn't. And that happened in Crisis, and it happens here in, in a shorter span of books than Crisis was. And we have, like, the JLA fighting Doctor Doom now, and the Avengers and the JLA kind of working together. Um, and they they meet, and they have annual meetings together uh, across worlds and all that. And and time starts to shift and gets gets funky, and they start to realize that even though they're, they're having a good time and being friends now, it all starts to shift, and, and now everything's getting destroyed. There's, like, this apocalypse world uh, for the Avengers, and there's, like, this, like, earthquake-y heated overheated world for the um jla and they both kind of realize there's something wrong here and they go to investigate and fight it and it turns out that this guy um is kind of rewriting the universe and merging their two worlds together and they're too different is the difference here uh they're they're not close enough to actually be able to work and so uh they're just going to tear each other apart and both universes are going to get destroyed wow and we have the Phantom Stranger here, and uh, he shows up and kind of shows them a doorway into uh, this weird cosmic universe. And the Grandmaster is dying and lets them know that, you know, this guy's trying to destroy the universe, but you guys can work together and figure things out. And there's lots of historical panels in here. Kind of show each other that, you know, things have gone not right. We have Wally West flash at the beginning of this and Barry Allen suddenly back and, and all that. And they realize that they're going to have to make some sacrifices uh, in order to make the, set the worlds right again. But because everything's kind of gone out of joint, uh, the timelines have gotten all messed up too. Hal Jordan's back, even though it's Kyle Rayner Lantern time. And there we go. Look at this Superman. Oh, man, he's holding the hammer and the shield. Wow, what a cool cover. Um, and they, you know, go out and they invade the bad guy's universe, uh, which is constructed out of like a dead Galactus. So cool. Again, just beautiful art all the way around. And uh, eventually, they beat the bad guy, believe it or not. So, of course. And shut it down. There's there's some more twist here um, in that the universe is going to erase. And uh, the Grandmaster really was planning this all along to end up like this. This was a game within a game, it turns out. And the Grandmaster uh, got to experience death in the game. And enjoy it and uh there's, there's just some great moments throughout this entire issue 
And it turns out that when these two universes merged, they, they made an egg. And the egg then formed that uh, from that other character, and he and uh, he was he was wanting to be like Galactus because Galactus was the end of another universe, and he formed into this universe, and that's why he's so hungry all the time. And he wanted to have that secret of universes beginning and ending, and so now he actually got his wish, believe it or not, and uh, is part of this egg into this quote new universe, which I don't think they ever explored. But uh, that's that very cool ending, uh, very cool all the way around. Here's the the little. Uh, reference I mentioned before with the character key, all of them, and there we go. Um, oh gosh, this is one of the coolest storylines I've ever read. Um, it's Crisis on Infinite Earths, like on steroids. So uh, it is, it is just a fast-paced, awesome adventure. And I thought, why do you need a compendium? Like, I mean, so I thought, you know, you're just going to get some art samples and things like that, and that's kind of silly. I didn't want that. So I started reading this, and it actually talks about all of the DC Marvel crossovers in history. And there started out one in the 70s where uh, the writers kind of wrote themselves into these stories where they just talked about this party they all went to for Halloween every year. And uh, it all sort of crossed over into these different books with, with them kind of jumping through these books. They slipped it past the editors, basically, is what they did. And then they did a bunch of official crossovers also, which every single one of them is listed here. And the first one was Superman versus Spider-Man in 1976. It goes all the way to Superman Fantastic Four from 1999. And there was an amalgam universe, too, where they kind of swapped concepts uh, uh, as a different thing also. And they just talked about that. Now, apparently they were trying to get this JLA and Avengers story going on for years. And there was an original version done in 1983. And this is where this becomes really cool to have, which I thought I wasn't going to be interested in. Turns out this is like the coolest comic history book. Um, George Perez was slated to do it, and he actually drew a bunch of pages for it, and then it got bogged down because Jim Shooter was like not okay with it, and then DC and Jim uh, DC's counterpart—I forget the guy's name—Dick uh, Gordiano, Giordano uh, went back and forth, and they they just could never agree on what's going on with this. So big fight, um, and they went in and they actually published. Uh, their their thoughts on this, and Marvel actually published these letters back and forth saying it's not our fault, and it went into Marvel Age as a publish, uh, published. And then uh, Dick Giordano actually wrote a response where he's like, nope, Marvel was at fault here. And I have no idea who's actually at fault or who's right. I mean, they both have letters substantiating what they're saying, and they both say it's the other publisher's fault that it never got done, but George Perez drew these pages and it never got used. And here's the original version, and it's awesome. So we get the pencils and a little description of what's going on for the first 21 pages of what was supposed to be the JLA Avengers in 1983. And they scanned all of them from all of their items. And basically, Kang, the, it was a very similar concept. Kang the Conqueror went back in time. Um, and who was, somebody else was doing it from DC who was like this, like, no-name villain. Uh, and they basically fought over this egg of a new universe um, and that actually thrust everybody into this whole time plot at the time. Beautiful pencils here. And, uh, you know, the Avengers and JLA got together and went back in time and, and tried to fix it. And then time kind of fell apart. So they started fighting in World War One. They started fighting in different time periods. And uh, we, we got a couple uh, pages of the actual fights between Captain America and Batman at that point. Uh, we got a little synopsis about what it was supposed to be. And that's it. We don't, you know, that's uh, that's the best we can get out of that. Pretty neat uh, because we get a what might have been. We get to see some cool art from that. That totally worth the price of admission just there. Um, and then we get the outline for this from Kurt Busiek. So we get to see his work and how he breaks down. He's actually pretty detailed and descriptive about this stuff. Pretty sure there's a Marvel Method style writing. And then um, he actually went back and there was, a, there was a scene he did originally and he edited it and changed it for the final product and wanted to show how that went, which is also a neat little process thing worth reading. And then you get this whole detailed annotated deal about the main storyline where they actually state why and who all of these people were. Some of them are, and, and actually their first appearances so that you know who everybody is in this book. Such detailed stuff pages and pages of annotated notes there it really just shows the care that they put into this this was none of these panels were haphazard and uh that's why this is awesome this is one of the coolest things i've ever read guys um and with the oversized art of george perez it's just 
really, really awesome. So uh, if you can get your hands on it, good luck. There's a paperback version, which I don't believe comes with this compendium stuff, which is too bad, but uh, uh, that's a little cheaper. I still think it's uh, hard to find and overpriced, but this is unlikely to be published again. Just Marvel and DC can't get their acts together on this stuff. So if you come across this somehow, pick it up. This is like a 9.5 out of 10 storyline, just absolutely epic. I love it more than Crisis on Infinite Earths or any of the Marvel crossover events that they've done on their side too. This is just perfection in comics uh, right here. So I hope you enjoyed This is a, This is one of those out of print ones. That's a weird one to get. And I hope you will leave a comment, hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.